From the Green Room Studios at Bates Nursery in Nashville, Tennessee, it's Gardening Inside Out, a podcast with highlights from our Saturday morning live show, answering all your gardening questions, giving you plant advice for any space in your life. Let's start the show. Hey, y'all. It's Caroline Gant. Hey, y'all. It's Austin Lowen. And Tyler Blankenship. And hey, what a day in Middle Tennessee. Oh, it's so nice. Is that what you're talking about? First feeling of fall. It's that first feeling of fall. We all get it. It ain't there yet. It ain't there yet. Oh, it's a false one, though. Crisp in the air. Crisp in the air? There's a crispness. Maybe crispness. Christmas. (laughs) Crispness. Yes. Uh, Even some of the leaves on the trees are starting to get a little crispy. You know what I mean? It's starting to happen. It is. I was driving up I-24 coming from Clarksville towards Nashville the other day, and it almost looks like fall because we've been so dry. The leaves are starting to turn, especially on tulip poplar. I noticed. Tulip poplar. You know, I talked to a friend about this yesterday, though. I think the tulip poplar's yellow is a stress response because it's mainly like the lower, like kind of well, interior. That's what I think it is, yeah, because yeah. it's been so dry in uh-huh. higher places. I know you live in a bog, which we talked about on the show. <laughs> I don't live in a bog, everyone. <laughs> Drama over here. I don't live in a bog. But you just live I do, in a wet, a it, wet it can be wet when it rains, yes. But no, like so there is stress response and tulip poplar definitely doing that. Another one, cottonwood around here doing that, showing stress response, wanting to just shed leaves and turn a little bit yellow. River birch is doing it a little bit. And but I think all those are stress responses. But you know what I did notice what? is that I I don't necessarily dogwoods are starting to change to their actual beautiful maroon fall yes. color. We get really good fall color here with dogwoods. Not that anywhere else doesn't, but I just noticed because I've lived here my whole life is that our dogwood color is really good in the fall. It's another reason to grow dogwoods, not just for their flowers, but they've started and like they've got that red maroon color on them mm-hmm. and that's going to persist for a long time. So get ready, y'all. Dogwoods are going. It's on its way. Mm-hmm. It's, it's at our doorstep. It's knocking on that door and it's about to kick it open. Mm hmm. Now, let's be real. It's still August, but it is the first signs. What did you tell me earlier? Like 56 for tonight for the low? Mm, Yeah, I think so. That's pretty, pretty good. I'm going to be wearing a sweater when I get off work. Mm -hmm. Tyler, (laughs) Tyler, you know what it's about time for when those nighttime temps start dropping. Punky spice? Oh, well, that for sure. We already, you. we already addressed that. We addressed that last week. But with we, the plantings, you got to get your 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 veg going on, man. Oh. It's about time for fall veg. Man, how how did I overlook that? It's it's time, y'all. Yeah, Better first wave have, has arrived at the nursery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a very small amount so far, but it's just going to get bigger and better. I think we've got yes. pansies coming this week. Do we? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm ready for pansies. How do y'all I'm not going to plant them yet, but I'm how, ready. How do y'all feel? Because I've also seen some other people around. Now, uh, for our listeners, we're in zone 7B. Mm-hmm. So I've seen some people already start carrot seeds and things like that. How do you feel about that, especially... Because later this week, it's going to be like in the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. I still actually feel pretty good about that because of the nighttime lows. Like once it's starting to to starting to dip at night, it's whenever we stay into like the mid to upper 70s, low 80s at night that, you know, it it seems like it's not time. But like once it when you're talking 50s at night or even like low 60s at night, like that's pretty good for me. Even if it does get up into the say mid 80s or even a 90 degree day or something, I think I don't think they would bolt that quickly. Yeah. Is it also the angle of the sunlight as it slowly starts its retreat towards the south? Uh, I think that definitely plays a role in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's. I'm just kind of wondering that. Because, you know, sometimes it can be tricky to judge those windows of, like, when do you get started? And I know you look at your sow-by date, but, you know, does this constitute, like, hey, I need to have a little shade cloth here? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, maybe for some people who get sun all the way to sundown, that's what they need to do to keep the intensity off. Mm-hmm. Because it's I, still summer. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely still summer. And and our, if you know Middle Tennessee at all, you know that every year is different. But, and nothing is the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it could be mid-September and we get a 95-degree weirdo day. Like, it happens. Oh, that'll happen. Yeah, and probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But I feel then, like I've seen it all you now. You can't be too late, though. That's the problem, you know? you yeah. got a crop that's a 75-, 80-day crop. Like you got to get it in. <laughs> like, it's either... <laughs> yeah. It, you get it in, we have stupid weather, and it bolts, and it's done for the season. Or you don't get it in early enough, and then you grow it for the whole season, and it never finishes anyway. So it's like, got to do it. What do you it. do? When you start, yeah. you got to start. What you, are you, you? going to start, Tyler? <laughs> well, I guess I might take some of the stock that we have, because I'm uh, maybe a little bit late for sowing some seeds. So, yeah, I'm going to go with starts. And also... Just as a hot tip to everyone out there who have to deal with cabbage loopers, yuck, mm. net 
your greens, net your fall plants. It's um, it's just so much less of a headache. You don't have to worry about so much. You still need to inspect your plants, but there's it's just way less of a fight, mm-hmm. you know, unless you use like BT or something. But this is like the non-chemical way to do it, the good deterrent way. I know you did that last year, and I saw your plants, how clean they were, and like you, minimal effort. Like that is honestly a good way to do it, especially in a small area. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's a that's yeah that imported cabbage worm is something. Oh, it's, it's bad. Certainly a fight. Tyler, and you do raised beds with everything. I do, and you have to watch how much you're crowding into your raised beds because you can crowd in a bit. But you also got to think if that's all netted and it's all in there and struggling for light and space, you know, mm-hmm. make sure that it has a little bit of room to breathe, mm-hmm. especially in cool. airflow, too, as you know. Mm-hmm. Speaking of fresh airflow, Caroline, what did you do? You went on a nature walk? Is that what I heard? I did huh. on my property. How's I, the air up there? It, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have a lot of land that I live on, and I hadn't walked to the back of it in at least a year. And I went on a walk and found pawpaws. Mm-hmm. I found passion flower, the good kind that I want. Oh, yeah. Fruiting and flowering everywhere. I found this little native that I'd never seen before called hairy leaf cup that looks like a little sunflower. Cute. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I've got a creek. I found a box turtle. <laughs> That's great. We all Turns need that everywhere. every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Did you name it? I didn't. I didn't. And okay. I didn't touch it. I didn't pick him up. I left him in a spot. Yeah, I don't think you're allowed to keep turtles here, are you? No. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not supposed to take them out of like where they are. Yeah, I don't think yeah, so. But you can go Just visit them. <laughs> yeah, I could go tell them hi. Yeah. That's I should have named him. <laughs> then maybe I could find him next time. But it was amazing just being out in nature, mm-hmm. taking it, a walk around. It is. Everyone needs to do that every once in a while. Mm-hmm. There was all this cool moss too, all over the rocks. Oh, yeah. Like big, though. I don't think I showed you a picture of it. Big rocks, big moss. Both. Big moss. Big moss on <laughs> big rocks. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. It was. Did I not show you a picture of that? Uh, you showed me the picture of the running creek, and mm. I heard the noise, and it, it was a great noise. The babbling brook. The babbling brook yeah. is a great noise. We can mm. all, I think, agree with this. You can sit and listen to that for a long time. I ain't live fickle when right it comes to, to a trickle. <laughs> <laughs> that's Damn right, it, Tyler. That's right. Uh huh. <laughs> well, yeah, I did that, and I've been doing some gardening. It's cooled off. Cool. I haven't done anything. Yeah. I know you and Tyler have both said you haven't really done much. Oh, well, other ahead. life stuff's getting in the way. No, and I'm know. sure it y'all, happens. you know, y'all probably have kids and stuff too. And they're going back to school. Oh. And you're like, how can I focus on my fall garden when I got all kinds of fall stuff going on? Yes. I just have to worry about those school zones. That's the only thing. Oh, I got to be in those school zones. I Thanks. mean, two of them. We all, we all do. Kids or no. I know. Usually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard to avoid. Oh. But, you know, I, and it also, once again, it's mid-August for a gardener, the worst. So I've yeah, even got, yeah. I told y'all earlier, I've got a morning glory that is taken I, over mm, my Japanese maple. I'm mad at you. Don't be mad at me. I'm not often mad at you about things that are happening in your garden beds, but I am upset with you over this one. Whoa. Are you Listen. telling the listeners what you're letting Listen this do? To I'm going to get my popcorn. I've got a <laughs> Ryu Houston Japanese maple that's a green leaf weeper. It's got a great skirt on her. She's already skirting out on the bottom like it's looking Skirt. fantastic. Well, you know what I noticed a couple weeks ago? Morning Glory has started climbing up it. And y'all, it's at the top. <laughs> and it branched out a lot. Like it's swallowed my maple. Now, the reason I haven't pulled it, first off, laziness and August. Okay. Haven't done it yet. Doesn't take much to but reach down. But then over the up. past week, it's been in just full on morning glory blooming stage. And care. my kids walk out in the morning and they love it more than anything. And I'm like, yeah, I got to pull that out. And they're like, what? My God, dad. No, you could never. It's so beautiful. And they're right. Morning glory is beautiful. It's also a beautiful monster. <sighs> Okay. Just like Sometimes Tyler. there's beautiful monsters. <laughs> just oh. kidding. You're beautiful. You're not a monster. So, so you just let that. it happen. Yeah, because I love my kids and their opinions. No, I mean, I appreciate and respect that, but I just can't believe you're letting a morning glory go crazy. I know. And you know what I'd be like? Seed and it's going to be awful. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, we're going to build an off ramp for Mr. Morning Glory <laughs> and we're going to send it over here. <laughs> I'm you know, certainly not going to pull and Morning like, Glory and replant it. <laughs> That's insane. You could just rework it. <laughs> That's to, what I'm saying. Because it's planted right next to your stairs, right? Yeah. So just bring it out of that Japanese maple, work it 
onto your railing on the other side of your clematis. Negative, not doing that. Come on. No, nope. it's going to eat my battle. house if I do that. So not you're just that. letting it eat your Japanese I'm maple. This is what I'm going to do. I've got a plan. I've Y'all formulated weigh in. one. Message us. Email us at gardeninginsideout at gmail.com and let us know what no. you think about Austin's morning glory eating his beautiful Japanese Yeah, maple. we want to know. No, don't do that. Yeah. I've already got a plan. It's a perfect plan. You're going to let it seed? I'm going to go home, and at nighttime, I'm going to bring the girls out, and I'm going to say, y'all, look, it's done blooming for the year. We got to say goodbye. And then I'm going to pull it up, throw it in the woods, and then the next morning, they won't see it bloom. See how perfect this plan is? Okay. I'm going to trick my kids. Should have done a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. They're going to be listening to this podcast one day, and they're going to be like, I knew it. He lied to us. I knew it wasn't done blooming. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good plan, though. Y'all got to admit. It I mean, is. I told you to just take it out and say that like, Garden Fairies no. took it to its new home, but you said no. Mm-mm. No. No Garden Fairies. No make believe. Not this time. Make believe is this time. fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Oh, y'all, that bed is so bad. Take pictures. We want to. No, I would us, never show pictures. Me and pictures Tyler of... and our listeners want to see. I mean, so bad for me is like not all that bad, but it is. It's getting to be kind of bad. And it's the left side. My right side bed looks really good. My petunias I cut back, what did I do that, two weeks ago maybe? Mm, Three weeks maybe? Uh, They flushed and are back full bloom. Misty lilac. So good. Oh, yeah. I have one misty lilac out of the four you gave me. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what what happened to, like, the other three. Honestly, I don't really know. I might have weed whacked it. Right. Uh... But that was a four pack of love I gave you, and you weed weeded it. To Listen, the actually, it might be two that are still going, but there was a shrub of misties still going on. There was another side that had all this grass growing up, and I was weeding, and I think I pulled some of it up, and then it just didn't look great, and then it was time for it to go. Great. But you know what? I have a picture of it on my phone, and I will show you. Okay. At a later date. It's crazy how something can in the garden can bother you so much to the point of like, you can't stop thinking about it. It <laughs> has to go. It mm. has to go. That's kind of how I was because one side looked fantastic and then the other side really didn't. And that's the side that somehow went. Oh, when things happen like that, just cut it and cut it to the dirt and let it re do its thing. Yeah, but cut I mulched. The good side I cleaned too? up that mulch yeah. and I. Uh, Get it back uniform. Yeah, but I mulched in everything. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, if I mulch on top of it, it might not be okay. So, I don't know. All right. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Okay. The you he's know. not over it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to talk about, we had a uh, we had a guest on the show this past week, Josh. Yes, we did. Josh Carey, our usual, decided not to tell us that he wasn't going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he in was, his defense, he did, but it was a while back, and we did He was kind of hundreds forget. of miles away in, yes. in the morning when we asked him, are you going to be on the show? Uh-huh. And he was like, not nah, in a different state. So, we got our general manager of like 24 years, Adam Chapman, fill in for Josh. And he was great. It and was he a lively show. Last minute, he jumped on. Last, last yeah. four minutes till start, and he was right in here. So that was. It thank really you, did. Adam. It fit the uh, the theme of that morning of everything mm-hmm. else that was going on. There was a lot happening. As the producer, sometimes you things get into place at the last minute. This time, it was everything. So it's not usually that way, and you know we we probably should address um, if you if you have a little trouble mm-hmm. hearing David, he's had some. Audio issues recently that we're trying to calibrate and make sure that he is more listenable <laughs> as yeah. we go forward. Mm-hmm. That'll get better. And, you know, Caroline just showed me this picture of this lilac petunia, and it is a shrub, and it's beautiful, so good job. Right in front nice. of my oak leaf hydrangea. Even though it's just one out of What's four. What's that behind it? A grass. That's a blue stem. That. My then, goth coleus. Oh, yeah. That's a big. Black leaf coleus. Everyone well, one should plant that. This looks right. Nice. So cool. Well, thank you. Good I will share it on Instagram. If you don't follow us, give it a f- give us a follow gardening inside out on Instagram. And if you want to email photos to us, problems or things you're proud of gardening inside out at Gmail dot com. But let's go ahead and get we into have, it. We have to acknowledge something, Caroline, we've ignored for like three weeks. Oh, we hit our year anniversary for the podcast three weeks ago. Hey. <laughs> I was like, why are you pointing at me? I guess it's I time was like, to be we done. We keep missing it every week. So, yes. Over a year of this. Can y'all even believe that? I know I can't. The show at large is like 26 years. 27, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, 26, 27. So, um, to have this be a continuation of that and, uh, and just... 
for us to sustain this for a year and also for you listening to us to uh, listen along the entire time. We're really grateful for you. Thank you. Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. Very cool. We've been on a ride together Mm -hmm. for a little bit over a year now. It's been great. And we're just going to keep going. Let's do it. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. But like we talked about, Josh Carey was absent on the show, so you'll get to hear Adam Chapman. That's the thing. That, yep. That's what's on my mind is we are dry right now, y'all. Yep. Mm-hmm. Grass is like brown and plants are kind of wilting. Like, oh, my it plants looked dry. sad when I got home. Uh-huh. My Eto peonies were all droopy. I had to water them. Over I the past, never water them. Yeah. Over the past like three days, I've had multiple customers come in and show me stuff. And I'm just like, it's mm-hmm. like, especially their lawn. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of like cool season grasses are just like, nah, I'm done. Yeah. Don't have water. It's hot. It's August. And they're just shutting down. Yeah. Uh-huh. I know. I soak my stuff for like 30 minutes once a week. Sometimes <laughs> hours know, because I forget. There's questions out there in the gardening universe that <laughs> uh, people are not even thinking about water. They're thinking about other things. So what you got, Caroline? Oh, so many. You know what? We're going to start with um, more of a comment rather than a question. Okay. okay. My we cross spine bloomed again and attracted hummingbirds. Thank you for the recommendation. You're welcome. I love cross spine. Yep, it's legit. It, it is legit. It's great. Mm-hmm. It's so great. Mm-hmm. Is that what you want me to say? It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> I love cross spine too. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. But it's it, still not better than clematis, but um, I, it is a good yeah, plant. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, There's Adam. <laughs> He's here. So much better. <laughs> it's a great native plant. You know, mm-hmm. they don't mm-hmm. sell necessarily sell a native cultivar, but it uh, you can find it growing out in the woodland area. So mm-hmm. it's great. Well, I, you know, the one caveat I'll give about clematis is you're you know, and Austin will men- mention this later, but is the sweet autumn clematis. It, mm-hmm. It's that uh, it it it's pretty close to cross vine in my opinion because it's just such a vigorous grower and an awesome awesome time to bloom too you know like when a lot of things are yeah exactly yeah. so now, mm-hmm. the only downside to that particular cultivar is that it, it is such an aggressive grower that if it's not planted in the right location it can become oh, sure. invasive sure yeah so it does it's escape one of those things that needs mm. to be thought about where are you planting mm. it and where can it possibly grow into because mm. it can need some controlling mm-hmm it is so pretty, though. I saw some in Salem when I was there last year going wild, <laughs> and I loved it. But let's talk about clematis a little bit. We do have a question on it. Are clematis hard to transplant, assuming early spring would be the best time to try? I mean, I late, don't know. I guess early spring's okay. Late winter. Yeah, late I'm winter. more of a winter kind of. We yeah. always talk about this. I mean, during dormancy, when there's no leaves, is kind of the, the least stressful on the plant anyway. And yeah, I mean, clematis is a fairly hardy plant, depending on the cultivar. It it kind of depends. It's got, clematis is that that hit or miss kind of plant. Like, if you put it in the right spot, it's great. If you don't, it's kind of struggly, bussy. Are you listening to yourself right now? You're <laughs> yes. not making. You're not making. <laughs> no, Adam. For clematis. Look, the clematis that I grow is the goat. Okay, it's the Jackman. best. Jack Jackmanii. Yeah. You can't beat it. Mm. That's the goat. But there are cultivars out there that I have seen that like. Aren't as strong, okay? All the ones that I plant. You remember when I planted one like two months ago? I think it's dead. Yeah, I probably told you not to plant it and you didn't listen, and now you got what you got. I don't think you did. Yeah, I think I, I did. don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, clematis, do it in the wintertime. Just, yeah. you know, cut it yeah. halfway back or something. Give you some sticks to kind of, or some old vines to kind of hold on to, and then, you know, get as much root as you can. Get it to its new home, water it in. Should be good. Should be good to mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. I do love clematis. They are real pretty. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Do you love crossvine? I think crossvine's a good plant. <laughs> do I necessarily love Thank it? You. No. But it is a good plant. Okay, it I'll is. give you that. It is. All right, let's talk roses. <sighs> My roses. The canes are stringy, tall, and with blooms. I use fish fertilizer every month. Help. I guess... She's got a leggy, leggy rose. Man. Need to get those. Well, probably should have got the pruners out, what, Er, three weeks ago? Earlier, yeah. Yeah. Probably so, because you've gotten a little leggy. But you've got blooms. So it's like, ah, you know, you want to leave the blooms. Like a rose that's blooming is what we want. That's the whole point. But you do have stringy, tall, leggy roses. Okay, so I'm Mm -hmm. sorry. Look, let it bloom. Let it do its thing. Let it it finish and do, do its show. And then after that, let's cut it back, maybe in half. Because a rose will still shoot oh, new yeah. new shoots, yeah. even if you mm-hmm. prune it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we got to cut the leg out. 
We've talked about it before. Cut Gotta the leg out. I love to talk about cutting the leg out. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm. But let it finish. Let, let it finish blooming. And then when's the best time to go ahead and prune it? Did you already say right it? after it blooms. Right after like, it blooms. Right when it's done, right when the show stops, you cut it. Cut it right in half. Wow, the show is over. Yeah. That's yep. the that's the curtain right mm-hmm. there. But yeah. then there's going to be a new show in the fall. It's going to be mm-hmm. great because you're going to cut it back. You're going to cut the leg out, and then we're going to have new growth and yeah, new, new blooms in the fall. There's probably. probably still time for it to flush up to I bet there's buds again. Yeah. I bet there's mm-hmm. one more flush for yeah. you, but you got to do it. So Okay, yeah. Yeah. My Carefree Wonder Rose is going insane right now because I finally fertilized it. Nice. Didn't fertilize it ever. And I looked at it yesterday, and it's got this, like, really healthy shoot just coming almost out of the ground. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited to see that. Cool. Y'all, roses mm-hmm. are very heavy feeders. Heavy. They need that fertilizer. They really do. Except for knockouts. Yeah, knockouts don't need anything. Knockouts <laughs> will grow just on a rock. I mean, they probably won't. But oh, man, knockouts are anyway. really blooming right now around town. Like, seems like every knockout I see is just full show. Well, yeah. it's because the, I, I think it's because the temperatures have moderated. Mm-hmm. Some. Especially My, those nighttime temps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw some drift roses in East Nashville last night that looked amazing. Mm-hmm. Just drifting all over the place. Mm-hmm. Right. Our next question comes from Miriam. Hey, Miriam. Good morning. Hello, Miriam. Good morning, Miriam. Is adding coffee grounds and eggshells to flower beds really worth it? If so, for what flowers? Uh, if you add a lot of them, yeah, yes. That's the thing. Um, a lot. Yeah. It, it's not a bad thing, no, Miriam. No, never a bad thing. So if you have extras, like, yeah, I mean, it never hurts to throw them in there. They're going to slowly kind of decompose and add to your soil structure, and, mm-hmm. and, and that's good. That's a good thing. It never hurts. Organic matter is always a good thing. So it's not going to hurt. But is it really like changing something quickly? Not necessarily. It's a slow kind of process. You know, the calcium benefit that you would get from the eggshells probably is six months uh, yep. out. And that's only if you crush them up really good mm-hmm. and get them on their way to being broken down really well. So it mm. it's not a bad thing, but you it's like, uh, the the lag time that you have, if you were going to lime your soil, uh, for instance, if you're using just a regular dolomitic lime, you if you did it right now, you're doing it for next spring. Right. Mm-hmm. That's when you're going to get the benefit out of it. So it's that much of a delay in the breakdown of it so that you really get that level of uh, addition. So just know in your mind that it's, uh, it's always a big delay. Now, the coffee grounds, to a much less extent, you Basically, the biggest thing you get out of coffee grounds is just organic matter. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's not acidic. The uh, acidic nature of it uh, goes away once you brew coffee in it. It's mm-hmm. it's perhaps mildly acidic, but it's very mild. It's pretty much just straight up, really particulate, fine, uh, organic material. Mm-hmm. You know what I think, Miriam? Yeah, what? I think you need to, instead of just putting those things straight into your flower beds, start a compost pile. Throw them into your yeah. compost pile and, and work that through the season and let that get all good. And then mm-hmm. in the spring, you can add that organic matter to right to your flower bed. That's why, you know, you don't have to look at eggshells in your flower bed. You know, it looks like nobody it, wants it, it, to look no, at that. It kind of mm. looks dirty. Like, mm, I don't like that. Don't eggshells cut up slugs? Isn't that something that people use? I don't up know. Eggshells? I've never done it, Maybe. but that just can't. OK, I don't know. Perhaps they do. I think they would, I guess, if they if you crushed them up small enough <laughs> yeah, slice it, up those little bodies well, they, would, they would have to be a similar consistency to salt mm-hmm. you know so yeah. okay yeah, and salt's not good for your compost no 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 just start a compost see. pile miriam just do it miriam mm-hmm. miriam love you mm-hmm. good morning miriam mm-hmm. all right we got a comment from joyce on the facebook page hey joyce i just saw you the other day oh <laughs> oh yeah she was out oh, nice. what she was get? here Joyce, what did you get? Let's see. Let's, uh, let's I test Austin's I do remember. memory right now. She got a she got a Japanese maple, oh. and she got a lot of earth mix. We piled it. Me and Mac, our bag loader. Love you, Mac. You're great. We loaded bags. We loaded the maple. She got something and else. Her on she her got way. three of something else, and I can't remember what it is. It's okay. What's the what? Okay. What's yeah. up, Joyce? Let's get to let's get to Joyce's <laughs> comment. <laughs> Joyce says, "I transplanted some Joe Pie weed two days ago and watered well. It hasn't missed a beat. The bees are happy, and I created a spot for the deciduous azalea I bought this week." Th- there you go. There it is. is. The deciduous azalea. Oh, deciduous azalea! I got Joyce. to plant three that I have in pot still. 
you know what? They're great. Uh, That's a great plant. Just can't get enough of deciduous azalea. They're great. Mine's beautiful right now. I haven't watered it all year. Like it's once those it's are cool. latched in, they they seem to be pretty good. And yours yeah. is in full sun, isn't it? Full sun. Oh yeah, but full what? like afternoon sun. It does get morning sun. But y'all know my house is different. All my all the water comes. You've down. got a different house. I, it, it just uh, everything stays moist at my house. You live I, in a bog. Kind of. I mean, down at the bog. I don't live in a bog. <laughs> But well, you agreed with a, me. No, it's a prick bog area. <laughs> yeah, it's just that all the runoff all comes down. So like, I don't have to water near as much. I'm very lucky. I'm a you lucky are. gardener. I don't have to water. But it's Joyce, a dry creek bog. Yes, the deciduous azalea. You, you got that. I remember now. And a lot of earth mix. She got supernatural, and she got some enlightened. That's what it was. She mm. got enlightened. Gotcha. I don't know what she was using it for, but she got it. Probably something cool that she'll maybe she'll tell us about it. But good job, Joyce, taking those plants home and planting them. Yeah, I know some of us in this room are tend bad to at buy that. stuff and then not plant them. Very bad at that. But yes. it's, it's so easy to just leave them in the pot and just water them every day. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's so easy. Oof. Let them dry out. Not easy to water them every day. Oof, I'm bad about that. It's never a bad time of year to add earth mix to your garden. Earthmix garden products are sustainably sourced living soils and amendments crafted to give you the best success for your gardening efforts. Establishing a raised bed? Use Garden Premium Topsoil Blend for an excellent performing growing medium for flowers and vegetables. Amend your gardens with their supernatural compost with all the nutrients needed to recharge existing soils. For houseplants, their Proganics Indoor Grow Mix is a fantastic potting medium that will feed for up to six months without the need for additional fertilizer. EarthMix is sold only at independent garden centers, so head over to earthmix.net slash find EarthMix to locate one near you. Success begins at the ground level when you use EarthMix garden products. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. I just bought a bunch of EarthMix mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. Because mm -hmm, I'm going to repot even more houseplants. Uh, of course. Well, I guess you have to. You need to, you need to. <laughs> I thought you were going to say transplant, but you said repot. Sorry. Of course. Hey, speaking of uh, proganics indoor earth mix, we got a question about um, repotting houseplants. Someone asked, how often should I be repotting and changing soil in indoor plants? I feel like it's um, it's not as often as you think. People think they have to change out the soil every year. That's not true at all. The roots mm. really don't like to be disturbed. They like to fill into the pots. Just I would say the majority of houseplants like to have their roots go all the way to the outside of the soil, where the pot is, start to wrap a little bit. So I have houseplants that have been in the same pot for like five to seven years. Mm -hmm. And some I... I transplant every like maybe three to four. But you really don't have to do it that often, especially if you're watering correctly and fertilizing that plant. Uh, if you look at like bonsais that have been in the same pot for, you know, 5,000 years, that <laughs> hasn't been switched. So if you're taking care of your plant right, if you're fertilizing, you might have to water it more often, um, but you really don't have to change it out that often. Your plant will let you know. Usually they'll start to... For one, you'll have to water it a lot. Mm -hmm. Once that plant has grown into the pot and the roots are really bound up together, it'll just go through water. And then your plant will start to show signs of stress, especially if you've been taking care of it, if you've been fertilizing it, but then all of a sudden it starts to drop leaves or something like that's happening without pests being present. That's typically a sign that it's time to repot it. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of depends on the plant, too. Yeah, There's some plants does. that are super fine with being, like, really root-bound. Mm -hmm. Mother-in-law tongue comes to mind. Oh, ZZ yeah. plant. Like, mm -hmm. they're fine with being tight in that Dracaena, pot. Dracaena. Dracaena, yes. Like, smaller pots, yeah. Don't go up to a crazy big pot. Like, that's Don't a big do problem. Don't do that. That is a problem. People think, like, oh, I've got this plant in a little four-inch pot. When I say that, I'm talking about the diameter across the top. Like, a little oh, bitty. if I put it in a 10-inch pot, it's just going to get so big right away. Mm -mm. It's not. You're probably going to kill it, or it's going <laughs> to spend all of its energy trying to grow into that pot that you're never going to get growth up above. It's going to hold too much moisture, and it's probably going to rot. Mm -hmm. So we always well, suggest. I'm just, I'm just wondering, what does it sound like when roots wrap? <laughs> you, know, like, you, know, you hear the big, the big low bass sound going down the highway. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'd say it sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I would think so. <laughs> and I hear that a lot because mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by house plants mm -hmm. and potted plants yes. and plants in the ground mm -hmm. and annuals. All of and them. all the stuff that's blooming. I know. All over the place. I'm just constantly I mean, there's still not as much thinking blooming. about it. 
thinking about what's in bloom, what is happening. Tyler, <laughs> where's the button? What's in bloom? Tyler fell With asleep. <laughs> no, I didn't. Tyler's been napping over there. That was I'm a, a live producer. Segue. <laughs> Tyler is on delay today. I don't know if y'all know. He's I, little, Tyler's he's great. 30 second delay. That's okay. <laughs> All right, what's blooming? Let's start with the shade stuff. So, Hosta. Hosta's in full bloom right now. Sun King Aurelia is great. It's not beautiful, but it's blooming. I know because I've got it. And I love that you plant. Love it's that so plant. good. It is so good. Rudbeckia, Echinacea. I've been talking about this for like a month. I'm kind of tired of it. Agastache, it's in full bloom, and the bees are just living it up. Mm-hmm. Living it up. If you're if you're a bee lover, a pollinator lover, and you're not growing Agastache, you're doing something wrong, okay? Coreopsis. Mm, kind of weedy. I got it right in front of me, but it's beautiful. They've you're got happy a about bunch it. right now looking great. We got flocks in the studio. Caroline did this whole set yesterday without me, and she brought in some flocks, and flocks is just great. That one is neon. Mm-hmm. It really is. Perennial hibiscus, dinner plate blooms as big as your face, still blooming, looking great. All right, panicle hydrangea is still going. Pure white right now. They're starting to fade, just starting. They're going into that pink stage, which is what they do. Some of them are like really in that pink stage, but for the most part, your panicle hydrangeas are mm-hmm. still in bloom. My hey, course. Bridge, your grasses are still blooming, and you got like a million grasses. Y'all, if you need grasses, we've got them. Like a million billion. Yep. We've got them. Adam, you love abelia. I know you do. Mm-hmm. It's yep. in full show right yep. now. Let's yep. go to our trees. Crepe myrtle still in bloom. Okay, full show. Still full show. Like full show. Okay, not even thinking about fading yet. It's the longest blooming tree you can grow. Everybody should have a crepe myrtle, okay? At least one. One's still not blooming. Oh, my God. <laughs> Your mimosas are, though. Yes. Your mimosa is still, some I of think, them still in bloom. I think it says more about you, Caroline, than it does about the Stop it, Myrtle. Adam. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, there's a common factor there. It's you. <laughs> it Adam. Is. All right, Rosa Sharon, it's still in bloom. That, that hibiscus, Siri, yak is still going, okay? Mm-hmm. There's a couple of sun-loving annuals, your zinnias, your lantana still going off. Hey, your natives, once again, the natives, the the list, you know, milkweed, joe pieweed, goldenrod blooming yellow, ironweed blooming purple, and passion flower, the coolest bloom on the planet, still in bloom. Hey, a few new ones this week, though, like Adam mentioned earlier, sweet autumn clematis. Mm-hmm. That little Start, vine. Starting. It's starting. It ain't full show, but it's starting. A lot of times people put it around their mailbox, and then it swallows the mailbox. Mm-hmm. But either way, it's blooming white, and it smells fantastic. Mm-hmm. Hey, one of the fall bloomers that we all think about is asters. Hey, is they just happening? started. Just started, okay? I'm going to be talking about this for probably a month, but they just started. Tyler, throw me up a pic because I got a shout out to my mother in law and father in law. Tyler, is that Tiny the best we got? <laughs> there we go. Hey, there we go. Perennial <laughs> begonia. Oh, Look at that. JoJo and Patty really awesome. out there in Chapmansboro doing their thing. Great gardeners, both of them. JoJo grows all the garden stuff, tomatoes, beans. Miss Patty does all of the ornamental stuff, and her bed is just beautiful. That I got her that I got her everything in this bed, pretty much. Not everything, but a lot of things. And they came from Bates Nursery, okay? Perennial begonia. That thing is awesome. Those leaves. Oh, it's so good. And she's got it planted in a cool little shade bed around a Japanese great. maple. It's fantastic. Tyler, next pick. Let's show her rose. Look at that. That's a white iceberg rose, y'all. And it is clean. Wow. Nice. Very clean. And it is full bloom right now. Patty, God, you're doing good. I saw you last night. We had a fish fry. It was fantastic. <laughs> Jojo, fries that fish like y'all wouldn't believe. And then let's do the final pick of the day. The whole scene. Look at this. Wow. All of that. That panicle hydrangea you see came from here. That Japanese maple that's standing up tall came from here. We got the roses, we got hydrangeas leading down to a Japanese maple, all sorts of perennials in the bed. You can see Patty in the background a little bit with my mm. daughter, Marley. Shout out. You're doing great out there. Doing great. That's what's in bloom. Wow. Thank oh, you. We got oh, one extra. One. And then, hey, I, there's a crepe myrtle. <laughs> there is a crepe myrtle, and that crepe myrtle comes from Megan. Hey, Megan. Yep. Great job with your crepe myrtle. And red then, dynamite crepe myrtle coming to an end of the season. Purchased at Bates in 2023. I tell you nice. what, it doesn't really look like it's coming to an end much. I mean, that <laughs> thing looks pretty pretty good. You got some barberries out there in front just spraying. Mm-hmm. My crepe myrtle does not look like that right now. Man, you're missing out, Caroline. It's never going to bloom. <laughs> never going to bloom. Is it in the shade or something? Like, why is it not blooming? Crepe myrtle's been blooming for like a month. Um, we should we should do an experiment and then transplant it to somebody else's house. <laughs> No one else is getting that crepe And myrtle. then it will that bloom. That is my crepe It'll bloom. I guarantee you it'll bloom. What variety was it? 
I don't know. It was a dead. It was a dead plant. It was a. What do you mean? It was a dead back. plant. It can't have been a dead plant, and now it's an, an alive plant. Somebody brought it back as a dead plant. Oh, yeah. but it wasn't really it wasn't dead. Really dead. And then I just randomly forgot. David, shout out to your uh, monkey grass video. Monkey grass is blooming. Oh, there you go. I meant to put that on the list, and I forgot. <laughs> Y'all, check out David's video. He mows monkey grass. It's sweet. It's so good. I feel like we bring it up about once a month. So if you haven't seen it, That's get a, get on YouTube and watch it. That is a mid February activity, Bob. Yeah, don't do it now. Yeah, don't Sorry. do it. Now. Sorry. Don't do it now. It's in bloom Plus right now. It's hair. blooming. Yeah. <laughs> it's blooming. Yep. And looking real cool. Well, we got in a lot of live questions and comments on Facebook. So Pam says, cool. waiting. Yes, very cool, Tyler. No, I love it. <laughs> Pam says, waiting on some rain to plant some hydrangeas that have been in pots all summer. Fall is just around the corner. Probably same, smart, Pam. Same, Pam. Uh -huh. I've got three deciduous azaleas that are just sitting and waiting. Mm -hmm. And then Joyce says, I over amended some of my garden. <laughs> uh oh. Joyce, you can't over amend. Joyce, I hope you're okay. Joyce is great. She's always okay. Hmm. I love Joyce. She's Joyce really nice. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I will say this. I don't understand the concept about watering a plant on top of the ground and waiting for better conditions than the fall. It's a whole lot easier from my perspective to go, go ahead, ahead and plant it. And get <laughs> yeah. it in the ground and it doesn't dry out so quickly that mm -hmm. way. So I'm... Mm -hmm. That was a bit of a head scratcher to me. I don't know why you would want to wait. I mean, do not wait. I would go ahead and plant. I think Maybe that's a good point. A little softer when it, I mean, that's true, but you can always wet the ground where you're going to dig and make the digging easier. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and plant. It's going to reap benefits down the road if you can get it in the ground. Yeah, get it's it just in there. if you get it in the ground and you water it properly first then yes, you're going to water way less a plant in the ground than you are a plant above the ground, Listen, for sure. some of us are using the excuse of waiting until the fall so we don't have to get out there in the heat and dig holes. You know what? So That's a good point. So y'all stop calling us out. Well, uh, hey, I'm one of those people. I'm the same way. Well, you saw the <laughs> forecast this, I mean, just a few minutes ago. It's going to be Listen, I 81. did plant some trees and shrubs three weeks ago in the heat because those were, okay. were uh, not happy. Yeah. Being annoying and thirsty every day when you come home. Yeah, and I bought that in the winter, so I really didn't have an excuse for that one. Should have planted it. And then Kimberly says, I'm starting a fiddle leaf fig. What size pot should I use? How do you get it to look like a tree? So I'm assuming you mean you, you propagated one. So you're starting one really small. So depending on the size of the plant itself, I mean, you don't want to go much bigger than what the, like what the root ball, what the root size is. So I would say if it's a little prop from a bigger stem, it's probably going to be like a four inch pot or so, not very big at all. And like we talked about earlier, let that grow into the pot all the way. So with it being a new little cutting, if that is in fact what it is, it'll probably grow pretty quickly once you get it in that soil. Keep it pretty moist um, until it latches in. And then they like to dry out between waterings. They don't like to sit wet. And the way to get it to look like a tree is you're going to want to strip off all of the lower leaves, let it grow up to a pretty decent height, kind of where you want it to branch out. And then you're going to want to prune it back. So it starts to branch and flush. And then you'll have a cute little fiddle leaf fig tree. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is... Uh called apical dominance mm. so whenever you prune the end of a stem that end is sending uh hormones down to the buds below it and when that is gone those hormones are not there anymore so it it goes out, shoots out always describe it as traffic there's a traffic jam and people have to sure, go somewhere sure. else yeah, yeah those good, cars have to go somewhere that's a good point yeah. and also just time you got to let, if you want it to look like a tree. It's like, going to take a lot of time. I know we get this question a lot with like, say, crepe myrtle. People are like, how do I make it look like a tree? And it's like, well, first off, you got to get it to some sort of size. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can play with it. But you got to get it growing, you know. So if it is a little prop, get it bigger. Get it And then bigger. we'll make it look like a tree. Oh, Joyce <laughs> says, got moles. My suffle, my suffle. My soil is too fluffy. So <laughs> Too fluffy? Oh, Joyce. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and is. then Donna says, love Sun King Aurelia. Have two in my yard. Uh -huh. Donna knows. Yes. Donna knows what's up. Sun King Aurelias are great. I planted two. Mine aren't growing that much, but 
You're doing something wrong. <laughs> I'm doing everything right, actually. I'm doing great. Uh, All right, and then Sam says, or ask, what is a Southern Live Oaks chances in this area? I know not, y'all not sell good. them. <laughs> Would love one in my front yard. When's the best time to plant one? Uh, here, never. Uh, in my <laughs> you're, you're not going to get it to grow here. But we not. sell them? Uh, we have, there, there was one Live Oak variety that, we tried to sell many years ago, uh, and it didn't work. It's just it's just too cold here in the winter. It mm. typically does, yes. I've literally observed one southern live oak in Middle Tennessee, and it was on MTSU's campus. And it had been there for, gosh, what would they tell me? Something like 20 years. But it was like dwarfed yeah (laughs) it suffered dieback yeah pretty bad every year and it did not stay evergreen like we love about live oaks that's the whole they call Mm -hmm. them live oak because they stay leafed through the winter time this one didn't over the winter time at mtsu it would shed its leaves and i don't know if it's still there or not i haven't been back to mtsu in like a decade but it, it was there but that is literally the only live oak i've ever seen living in middle tennessee so i kind of want to take a little trip to see if it is in fact still there well, go on up. Give us a live report. I will. I'll live stream it the entire live time. Live stream it. Yeah. Live stream it. All right. Somebody asks, how to mulch flower beds to allow previous seeds to come back? Wait till bloom or in the cold? That's a great question. Wait till bloom or in the cold? Like do it while the plants are up and blooming or do it while they're dormant? So I think they're talking about plants that probably drop seeds. I think we probably don't want to add too much of a layer of mulch on top of seeds that have already dropped probably you really don't want that yeah you don't want to bury your seeds too that's a very very common thing that happens is you bury seeds too deeply yeah and they won't germinate so if you pile mulch on top of that during dormancy i probably wouldn't do you know what i would probably do is wait till they jump in the spring like don't mulch at all let them grow in the spring and watch them germinate which is always fun and great love that and then after they're up a little bit then mulch around them that would be my way to go. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think. You, you could you could do a thin layer of mulch. Yeah, but don't go very deep. thin. It very has thin. to be very thin. Yeah. yeah. You know, some say there ain't no cure for the summertime blues, but we say Bates Nursery is. Located in Nashville, Tennessee, Bates Nursery and Garden Center is a separate world unto itself. They feature the widest variety of plants, including trees, shrubs, native plants, perennials, house plants, and specimen evergreens. Their knowledgeable staff will assist you with any gardening needs, catering to any experience level. Open year-round, and Caroline, tell them how to get here. Bates Nursery is located minutes from downtown Nashville off Briley Parkway, exit 19 in beautiful Whites Creek, Tennessee. You'll see it's worth the drive from anywhere. No time to visit the nursery? Shop online with delivery and pickup options available for the greater Middle Tennessee area at www.batesnursery.com. So if you want to learn a lot about living and a little about love, Visit Base Nursery and Garden Center, beautifying Nashville since 1932. Let's do another question. <laughs> Let's get into questions. All We've right. got a question about petunias. Yes. My petunias are spent. Replant oh. or wait for pansy season? Don't replant. I think finding them to replant would be yeah, very be Yeah, I was about to say, you're not going to find a tunia probably right now. But you're going to wait for pansy season, certainly. But don't delay cut those things back y'all like cut them close to the dirt the pansy i just did this two weeks ago with my pansies they have reflushed new leaves they have cracked new blooms yeah they're smaller but they're coming back great like it's not time really for pansy season yet so with petunias like i said literally with a a lot of annuals y'all they get tired this time of year cut them back they and fertilize them they will reflush and Mm -hmm. rebloom pansies are no i mean petunias are no different yeah, you cut yours back a couple times, don't you? You cut them back right when you plant them, and then you give them a cut back. A I top, weeks ago. I, yeah. I mean, right when I plant them, I top them. I top every single one. That way, they just they have you know they branch. Like mm-hmm. Adam was talking about mm-hmm. that the apical dominance. Once mm-hmm. I get rid of that, then they're gonna branch new leaves <laughs> and have traffic patterns. Be a bigger a bigger bush. Yes, mm-hmm. a bush. I didn't know. Yep. But you know it's what I mean. It's a shrub. It's a tunia shrub. The tunias. It's a tunia shrub. Bushier shrub. It's a shrub yes. somewhere. Uh-huh. It's a shrub somewhere. There you go. You know, petunias are shrubs in Alaska. Petunias hmm. love Alaska. Really? Yep. Fun fact. There you go. Wow. Mm-hmm. My coleus is a shrub. I took a picture of it, but then didn't send it to Tyler. So we'll get it up next week. Great. We do have a comment about live oaks on our YouTube page. So if we can't grow live oaks, what type of tree can we grow with a similar growth habit? Willards. Oak, water oak. Yeah. 
Willow oak would look Willow a lot oak. like it. Uh-huh. And sawtooth oak would look like it, too. Uh, sawtooth oak grows like a weed, man. Yeah. That's the, cra- the fastest growing oak I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even like northern red oak is that classic oak leaf. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's not one that has – willow a- oak is probably the closest yeah. Yeah. when so it comes to the actual leaf shape. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but willow oak can get really big. David, you know that. Talk about your willow oak in your backyard. Oh, that's yeah, huge. One planted by my dad uh, about 60 years ago. and it, Most people guess it to be 150 years old. So <laughs> it, 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 looks, it looks to be twice its age, mm-hmm. kind of like me. Back to that. <laughs> oh. uh, don't. Uh, but it, it's a very good... Um, Fast growing in the oak world, yeah. Uh, you mm. know, compared to me, and it's in a premium spot where it's in deep topsoil and it's gotten maximum nutrition. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's done well uh, and it's grown quickly. And I don't know that if uh, Adam Austin and I could join hands and oh no, around we still couldn't get so. our arms around it. I think no. you should still try. <sighs> We'll that would be funny. <laughs> it would be. We'll get a picture. <laughs> we will. You're making that promise right now. I'm doing it. We're joining hands. Soon. Y'all get on board. Y'all will join hands. Uh huh. I don't guess I have a choice. No, nope, no choice. You've said it. You've said it on the internet, it's and a, now it's there. It's a willow oak trust ring. A willow. Oak I don't trust know ring. why I said that. <laughs> All right, we've got some more live questions coming in. So. Kimberly, Kimberly asks, I have rhododendrons that have been planted in partial shade, but have never bloomed. Is it health? It is very healthy and green. What am I doing wrong? Welcome to the rhododendron in this area club. Well, it could, it could be a uh, pH thing. It could be a nutrient deficiency. You know, maybe you want to put on, put some flower tone on them, you know, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you you're know. right about about pH. I think is a good yeah. word too. Yeah, and the yeah. thing is about rhododendrons, they they set their buds the year before. Mm-hmm. So, um, right now. yeah, right now is when they're setting their buds. So, and also too, rhododendron. You know, you had. I one. was about to say Go I ahead. had three <laughs> sit with buds on them for four years before they bloomed with the buds. That stayed just like that. They like didn't really grow. I got a few new leaves, and then one spring they exploded, and then they died. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> Talk about holding their breath. Wow! <laughs> but they're just—they're yeah, just—they're notoriously. It was, just, they're notoriously, it was quite a show, though. They're notoriously slow. Yes. Like just slow to move in a lot of directions. Mm-hmm. You know, like slow to take, slow to root, slow to grow, like all of that. So just be patient with your roadies. If you get if they're Clean, green, healthy, looking good. Like you're doing, you're doing right. You're not doing wrong. <laughs> yeah. You just kind of have to wait it out sometimes. And yeah. in, in horticulture and in nature, things sometimes take a while. Yeah, be patient. Slow. I've got some that are doing great, and they kind of bloom sporadically right now because they're they're a little immature. They're not really big. I I feel like they're newly planted for rhododendrons. They've been in these spots for three years now. Um, but I finally got a lot of leaf growth on them this year. So they're very happy. Nice. And then we got a question from Candy that says, I have real monkey. I have real grass destroying my monkey grass. Do I just start over? Ooh. Ooh. Probably, probably I'm, I'm guessing it's Bermuda grass is what I would guess. Evil probably. grass. Evil yeah. grass, yes. So real evil. That, that can be quite difficult <laughs> uh, to uh, get rid of, especially in, in a stand of... Uh, of uh, monkey grass so mm-hmm. i mean it may be a matter of a combination of things like uh pulling what you can see and in the winter time when you cut back the monkey grass it'll be a little easier to get in there and pull stuff yeah. out um it's a it's a tricky battle i think is. is what we're and, getting and, to and, yeah and it will take a while you'll have to you'll have to keep doing it mm-hmm. until finally those rhizomes have lost all the energy to have in them to you know keep going so yeah the it, question of which loses the energy first the y zones or you or you <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Great exactly that, point. that great is a point. great point the grass is very resilient so yes. it'll uh, it'll hang in there for quite a long time yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. keeps going and then someone asked when is the best time to come to Bates to pick out dogwoods and other small ornamentals so that I can shop your best selection definitely uh, not 3 30 <laughs> <laughs> we close at four yeah now, uh, that's a really good question, actually. I mean, uh, mid-September to late yeah. September is when we really yeah. get a ton of trees in, especially yeah. dogwoods, redbuds, maples, all those good things. Um, and and our, our tree trucks are heavy, y'all. I mean, they are full semi-loads of trees. It is no joke. So, yeah, 
mid September, yeah. I'd say, is, yeah, I is probably say. the best time yep. to shop our best selection of trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Best time to come on down. And we've got the spots reserved for them on the tree lot, and they'll be forthcoming here uh, Pretty in soon. the near future. Pretty soon. Well, that was a quick hour. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. Quick and fun. Caroline and Austin, thank you all for participating today and uh, help keep this gardening thing going along. We want to, again, invite you to come out and see us at Bates Nursery Garden Center. We're opening in one minute, maybe 30 <laughs> seconds now. So come on out and see us. Uh, again, 25% off all plants and bagged earth mix garden products for Bates Rewards members, and you know who you are. And it's worth what you pay for it because it's free. So mm -hmm. check it out. Come out and see us, Bates Nursery and Garden Center. Thanks again for tuning in this week. And we hope you'll uh, tune in again next week. Where we'll be talking more gardening inside out. Thank you for tuning into the Gardening Inside Out podcast. If you're looking for more information or more from your hosts, don't forget that we have a live Saturday morning broadcast, 8 a.m. Central Time on YouTube and Facebook. You can also follow us on our Instagram channel. That's at symbol gardening inside out for more posts, reels, and in-depth dives to topics and things we've discussed on the show. If our content resonates with you, consider giving us a follow, like, and subscription on all of our social media pages. See you next time.